Hi, I'm Sophie Jury from the Holistic Directory and today we've got with us Linda Thursby of Barn Therapy Centre. Hi Linda. Hi Sophie, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So, um, you obviously run the Barn Therapy Centre. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what the Barn Therapy is and what it does? Yes, I set up the Barn Therapy Centre in 2006. Um, it was really because I was finding I was needing to... Um, put all my work that I've been training for since uh, 1993 into something and that was what I did. Um, barn therapy started off really with a sports um, background and slowly I started getting a little bit more confident with what I was doing and actually being able to use the body talk and then going on to use my fascia release because it was something that wasn't very well known. So um, so that's really how it all started. And um, basically set the business up with through networking and um, clients have been literally word of mouth but I now have clients that travel from abroad to come and see me whenever they're in England and also coming up from London and coming down from Manchester as well so it's very exciting. Fab so what got you started with doing treatments in the first place? I basically years ago when I was 15 I fell off a horse and thought nothing of it and went round in pain for 24 years until it was finally diagnosed that I had a old fracture in my neck um, that no one had ever picked up. And I've been seeing osteopaths, chiros, you name it. So I'd had all that pain of being um, suffering from an old neck injury to have to deal with, which wasn't very pleasant. And I was then ended up being nearly addictive to um, painkillers because of the pain. So that's one side. But the other side was really, I think, the big push was um, my mum had ME and um, I was just trying to find something to help her cope with the whole thing of being having ME and, you know, not being right and trying to do stuff for yourself, but you can't find anything because you've got no energy. Um, so I think really it was Reiki that really pushed us to actually starting the route of alternative medicine. OK, cool. So you, you mentioned myofascial release and body talk. So are they the two? You, do you do other treatments as well or are they your main ones that you like to work on? Um, they're the main ones. There's three main ones I like to work with. It's body talk, myofascial release and pelvic correction. Um, I do have numerous other ones that I use, but I use them more as background knowledge than anything else. It's nice to have them there. Um, occasionally I do have to resort to doing the old Reiki treatment or um, going, get, getting down and doing some um, sports therapy and doing the ultrasound. Um, it really depends on the person because the way I work is very in individual to each person. It's not a question of coming in, telling you what, what's wrong and saying, right, this is what we're going to do. Um, it is a very unique way of working, um, which I kind of put together in the clinic through observation and uh, already knowing some of the ways of how body talk works with kinesiology so I've developed that as my kind of like signature way of actually treating people. Excellent so it's like a, a very holistic way of treating them so do you want to tell us a little bit about what uh, let's start with myofascial release what actually kind of what does that do for somebody? Myofascial release is basically we have what's called fascia which is just underneath the skin and fascia holds on to a lot of trauma a lot of emotions and when things happen to us, um, our fascia changes. It adapts to whatever's happening, what trauma's happened, what accident, what injury, what surgery's been involved, what the body's been involved with. And in due course, it starts holding on to these memories. Um, and it can be nearly 20, 30 years down the line, at sunny, it will start having an effect on the actual physical and mental with a client, I'm surprised that I do hold on to things because a lot of us tend to say, oh, I'm not about that. It's not an issue. But if you consciously, when you're stuck in the conscious body, it's still an issue. And that's really where you're working from. Um, my fascia really is a very, very gentle technique um, of basically just putting your hands on the area in question and just feeling the body unwinding. I always liken it to unwinding a big ball of wool that sometimes it goes really quickly. And then sometimes it will stop and knot up and you just have to wait for that unknotting process to happen to then basically un unknot the whole rest of the knot. Um, it's fascinating to watch and feel as well. So pelvic correction was a very odd way of actually coming across this. I attended a workshop um, just to basically gain some more knowledge about the pelvis and resumes. And this gentleman came out with a stick and two donuts. So I really wonder what's going to go on. 
basically it's a contraption that he invented to um, align the pelvis. And I have to admit, it really was life-saving for me because I was having so many issues my hip after having my accident that this contraption has just literally just sorted things out that I was able to go back and run and be fit again. Pelvic correction is very much using a, um, a way of leverage to actually release the pelvic, pelvis. And uh, it's a very, very good technique, but extremely effective and can affect the rest of the uh, structure of the body. So when people come and say, oh, I need a massage or I need something else, I would sort of say more than look at your structure before you go on and do the actual decoration bit, as I call it. Um, if you don't have good foundation, what's the point of actually working with the body? You make sure the foundation is in the right place before working with the soft tissues. But that's my say on things. That's what I've observed and what I've actually used for myself. Everyone has a different way of working. So that's really about correction. I think the majority of my clients probably will get that at some point or at every session. Okay, so what? how does Body Talk fit in with both of those? Body Talk is... Um, put together with a whole load of uh, highly recognized techniques such as traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, uh, chiropractic, osteopathic work, uh, psychology, uh, you name it, and loads and loads of systems that are already very well recognized within the terms of medicine. And it's um, constantly evolving and is backed by some amazing top um, world-renowned uh, quantum physicists as well. So actually constantly working on epigenics, how things are changing. And it's a fascinating world to be part of because it definitely is, I, I reckon, possibly where the future of medicine is gradually going to be going. It's, it is within itself a healthcare system. And it works very basically on actually um, working and talking to the body, hence why it's called body talk. And we use technique um, based on kinesiology where you play little yes, no game with the body. And we're not talking to the person, we're actually more communicating with their body, their consciousness and their subconscious, which is amazing to get down that deep into people. And it's fantastic for people who have either blocked off memories or can't talk about things because they just don't know how to talk or how to explain things, especially when it's being child abuse as a child or things like that. Um, but also going on to various things like, you know, they're in their latter years and something happens and... They don't understand why suddenly something's happening to them when they've been really fit and well. Um, and you can trace it back through um, body talk to either the way they were born, what happened in the womb, how they were as a child, various accidents or injuries or surgery they had as a child or an adolescent. And for them, it's fascinating to actually be able to retrace the origins of what is happening to them um, in this present world. Body talk is primarily the technique I use. I didn't at first, as I was saying earlier on, I used sports therapy because if I'd gone in and started using body talk and started tapping people on the heads in 2006, I think I would have, people started really wondering where I was coming from. So I literally gradually built up the trust for my clients that I offered something very different. And through that trust, I now have a thriving clinic and everything is done through word of mouth or networking. Even when people don't have issues, people still like to have what's called MOTs. There's always something in the body that's ready to be released, whether, you know, even if you're well. And that's what I love about it. Always find something to work on, something to improve on, something to help. Whether, you know, you're coming up for a very stressful time and you can get the body ready to cope with a stressful time. I mean, I've had people helping with people coping with new jobs or exams or even weddings and even childbirth, which has been fascinating to work with. When I'm working with the other techniques, I really ask the body more than anything else what it needs from me, what else it needs from me. Um, is it myofascial release? Is it pelvic correction? Or is it one of the other therapies that I may have at my hand? Um, it, it's a wonderful way of working because the subconscious of the person who's on the, on the couch will know what I can do for them. And it's amazing how we seem to attract clients who need something that you are the only person who's got that because of either your background or your experience or what you've actually been through yourself and I absolutely love that I mean each person that comes through is a challenge and a wonderful challenge excellent so it's a real physical mental combination and I would imagine a lot of clients turn up with all sorts of things and then they are a bit blown away by the fact that it's not necessarily what they were expecting to find Oh, completely. Um, because of the depth, I mean, sometimes you can actually go into 
Uh, I mean, I've been working with people with uh, eating disorders and um, it's amazing how each one has a different reason why they are suddenly having got, having, that, that they've got an eating disorder. And it could either be that um, it's how they used to be and they don't like the way they look and then they just start going on this trend and their body has gone into like a defense mode and survival mode. And it's a question of just bringing it out. But it's amazing what is in the background of all these things. I mean, some of it, and one, with one client, it, we basically found that it was all to do with kind of a, a grief, you know, and I think grief is a big one with all these things that I'm actually looking at. There's always a grief, but with grief, you could write a whole lecture about grief. You know, there's loss of being with someone, loss of a pen, you know, all those kind of things. So it is a fascinating way of actually getting into the mind, but also the cause. And, and even going down the hydration of the digestive system or the hydration of... Um, the lymphatic system, so you can actually start removing toxins. That's the kind of level you're working down to, and even further than that, that you can even go down into the actual cell, cellular and the tissue uh, level of the body, going down to your quarks and your neurons and your atom, atoms, and actually activating those parts as well. It really is. The world is your oyster when you work with body talk. I find it amazing. So would you recommend body talk as something that everyone I mean what sort of people would would be suitable to come and have a body talk treatment it's it's it sounds pretty amazing I'd say I mean everyone is basically a candidate for body talk because as I said just now everyone has got something that going on in their body whether it's an old injury whether it's a digestive issue whether they're actually their immune system's a bit weak I mean at this time of year it's amazing how we're always going to be catching these viruses and I've been so prone to having them and I've been a uh, you know, really strengthening my immune systems. I am not going to get this. I'm not going to get this. And I'm finding a lot of people's immune systems are getting very weak due to going into the winter months as well. So the fact of that's a great one. With children as well, when they're going to new schools, they can, you know, you can work on, I had a little three-year-old the other day, which was lovely to work with. And you're just working on confidence or issues why their digestive system is not working properly. And most of these people have gone through the, the medical route. I'm not saying the medical route is, not, is wrong, but sometimes they just can't see the answers. Um, but body talk goes a lot deeper than that and finds m more of the answers. Sometimes the answers aren't something that medical professional can deal with because it is a psychological issue. It is an emotional issue that needs to be addressed, not a, all right, you need a pill um, because that's going to sort you out. It might sort you out for a while, but the person will still constantly get these issues and they might get worse and worse and worse. So that's, I'd, I'd say really everyone, everyone can have um, a body talk treatment. And I do have a lot of skeptics that come saying I've been dragged by my wife kind of thing. But when they see the depth and what I come up with, they then kind of realize that, yeah, there's a lot more to body talk than just being dragged along by the wife kind of thing. So it's quite good fun. So as with so many holistic treatments, it's very much that uh, it's treating the root cause rather than the symptoms. Definitely, definitely. You, you're going right down to that core. I mean, a lot of, if you go into the doctors, it's more the tip of the iceberg, whereas with body talk, you're working on what's underneath the tip of the iceberg, what's underneath the water, which is very much the image that we use a lot in alternative medicine is you actually you're working from the bottom up, not the top down. Um, and I, I'm, it's just amazing how you can work with people whose part of their body's being shut off due to an injury, and then you suddenly see it kind of coming alive again and they're saying get tingling and they say get sensation and they suddenly get warmth in that area or the numbness suddenly disappears from that area because life is going back into that area because it's suddenly being brought back out of that survival mechanism that the brain puts us into when something happens it's a, it's a natural reaction of, of our body to do that and to find a system that can bring you out um, and also might as well add, it is quite a quick way of working as well I'm not saying it's um, it's the way it works with everyone, but a lot of people within one or two sessions already can feel the benefit of what's happening. They suddenly feel a lot more confident um, or they suddenly find that they're not having to use um, as much of the med medical help that they're needing. And when I'm working with people with medication, I do try and get them to check with their doctors first. And I have quite a few that have been actually being monitored by their doctors. So we can work with uh, thyroxin, with insulin as well. But I'll only do that if we're working in conjunction with a doctor who understands what I'm doing as well. So can you do body talk on yourself? Oh, yes. 
Um, a lot of people say to me, if only you could bottle up what you've got, because I've always got so much energy. And those who are listening to this and know me will know I'm always constantly on the go, juggling several businesses. Um, and I can honestly say that the only way I'll probably get through it is by actually doing regular body talk treatments on myself or having treatments done um, by other practitioners when I either meet up with them or um, have a distance session, which body talk can work on a distance level as well. I do that a lot with uh, my clients who go into hospital. But to be able to do some things for yourself, I think is amazing. You know, when you're feeling tired, you can reboot your brain, you can rehydrate your body and uh, strengthen your immune system. And, you know, if I'm going out for a run, I like to make sure that my coordination's right to go for that run and get the best out of the run. So the fact of doing something like that with yourself is just amazing because I can only massage only certain parts of my body, but I can't do my back. Whereas with body talk, you can do the whole body and everything else. So from a business perspective, then, obviously, body talk and a lot of the treatments that you do, your whole kind of service that you offer is fairly difficult to explain in a nutshell, especially for lay people who may not have any experience with holistic treatments and that sort of thing. It's a whole new world to them. What would you say has been your biggest challenge in, as a business person in terms of getting that message out there and, and getting the work in from that? Well, I suppose I always, I, people always say, what do you do? What does body talk do? And I say, oh, I just tap people on the head and they just look at me in a very weird way. <laughs> but I always had, a, I had, I've always used a bit, a bit of a sense of humour when I'm talking about what I'm doing because it seems to break down quite a few barriers. Um, there are a lot of sceptics out there. There are a lot of people who don't still don't understand what alternative medicine can do for people. Um, and they sometimes say, oh, well, what's happening is just because that person believes. And it is a question of actually... Uh, working with that person and seeing how to communicate with that person. I think that's what I would probably do the best is if I'm talking to a builder, I will talk to them about body talk in a construction way. If I'm talking to a plumber, I'll talk to them in a, with, you know, to things to do with plumbing, etc. cetera. So if you're working with a business consultant, um, the biggest, which I do a lot of, is you actually look at the body as a business and body talk goes in as a business troubleshooter to troubleshoot the various departments and find out where there's a problem. And when the problem's found, you find a solution. And I think that's probably quite a nice way of actually describing body talk in layman's term to people who don't quite understand all this business of tapping and energy and everything like that. But when you break it down, like um, your body being either a computer or a building or plumbing work or anything like that, people understand it better. And I think that's the best way that people in, in business, especially in um, alternative therapy, can do is to communicate with those people who don't understand about energies about how things are working in a on a level that they will understand um and that's been something that i found i've been um doing quite well because i'm getting a lot of people saying it's only because of the way you explained it to me that i come to see you it's not because of all the other stuff and the energy work i don't understand that but because you explain it in a matter of fact and down-to-earth way that's why i've come to see you that's why i've come to have body talk and I think a lot of therapists out there need to sometimes be a lot more grounded about the way they're talking to people um, because a lot of people can get scared off by what is being said because they don't understand it. It's, it's, a, it's a foreign world. It's an, they just don't understand it at all. So you need to bring it into their world and then eventually, slowly, they will come into your world as well. training and offer it offer themselves but have you got any uh tips for someone who might be thinking about starting up as a therapist and has got no you know what would you say to them would be some of your top tips top tips i'd say is definitely go with go go with the flow go with what you feel comfortable with first um if you want them to go and do massage go and do massage if you want them to do reflexology fine go and do that but find something that's going to combine and actually work with everything because I think that's the way things are going to start going more and more forward. We seem to be combining a lot more things because each one of us have got different things because of our background, because of what we've been through, that we will be attracted to. And that's what makes us very different and unique as a therapist within our own right. And people get attracted to you because of that. Um, I mean, I, I, as I said, I mean, I've got Indian head massage. I've got hot stones. I've got, oh, you name it. I've even gone down to doing waxing because I had sportsmen coming to me and said, I don't want to go to a beautician, I need to wax. I was thinking out the box constantly of what my clients would want. Some of them I don't do anymore, but it's nice to have that knowledge sitting there. 
Um, so I'd say to, to therapists setting out, you know, know what you want to do, but make sure that you've probably got a lot of knowledge because sometimes when clients come, you need to sit on the fence with them. You don't know whether you're going to go on the kind of like general knowledge side of, oh, yes, this is a bone, this is a muscle, and this is blood, and this is that. Or are you going to go on the energy side where you're looking at the acupuncture meridians? Are you looking at the auras? Are you looking at the chakras? Are you looking at all that kind of energy kind of medicine? So I definitely say to people wanting to go into being a turn to therapy is um, sit on the fence. Make sure you've got knowledge of both sides, what's going on, because you never know if when your client comes where you're going to be dragged into or taken to. So to be able to open your mind up completely and be accepting whatever comes up and understanding it will open your mind up more to what kind of clients you're going to be getting and the interesting challenges and cases you're going to get as well. But also that when something comes up, you go, oh, brilliant, that's that. I know how to deal with that and not be scared about something because the worst thing is when something comes up in sessions... When you suddenly get scared, it can really kind of freak you out, but freak the client out as well. And I have heard a few cases where someone has freaked out, but they haven't known how to deal with the situation. And so I always say, you know, make sure you know a lot about the energies, a lot about, you know, even past life stuff and souls and what goes on on that level and have an understanding on that. Okay, fantastic. Well, that's been really really interesting so what does the future hold for you and barn therapy exciting times i've had a few false starts on um, various projects but i'm hoping now times are going to be right that we basically we'll be able to push it forwards i'm trying to get barn therapy into actually um being a recognized area that where people can come for kind of like overall um experience and i'm now looking at people to come in and actually join me which is a very exciting stage of my life um, very daunting as well because I'm not one person that lets people in easily and I've had to do a little work on that but it's all coming to fruitation now which is great but it's definitely I'd like to build the practice up to offer something very very different but not just for adults but for children for the elderly as well but you know just giving people of all ages a different experience but possibly even you know going into corporations and offering a kind of corporate training on a very very different level for people that they've never really looked at um, because there's a lot of mind work within the actual body talk system which I'm hoping to bring up to Norfolk um, within the new year and um, that would attract a lot of kind of solicitors and accountants and people within that corporate world who would want to come and explore how the mind works a lot more without learning a therapy as such. It's very much about mind building and using the brain like a powerful computer not like a calculator so that's really where I'm starting to aim now um, I have been otherwise involved in other projects which I'm now slowly coming out of um, so barn therapy is coming more in the forefront um, which is very timely for this interview <laughs> which is fantastic news so obviously there's going to be lots of people thinking how do I find out more so how do they get in touch with you and find out more about barn therapy and obviously booking a treatment and experiencing this fabulous stuff I've got my website online, which is uh, barntherapy.com, and um, people can either approach me through that, um, sending me an email, or just phoning the phone number, which is on there, um, which is well, it's, it's sitting on the on the website. The um, it's also nice if people aren't quite sure what I'm doing is to read the testimonials because within themselves they tell a story of my journey with um, barn therapy and what I've been dealing with, but also the wonderful clients and um, cases I've been having as well but um, I definitely say if people want to get in touch have a look at my website barntherapy.com contact me via that or phone the number which is actually on the website and um, I'd be very happy to you know get let people experience more of what happens um, within barn therapy whether it be body talk my fascia or pelvic correction fantastic that's been absolutely brilliant speaking to you thank you very much for joining us today and uh we'll hopefully be able to have a chat with you again soon to talk about more things to do with barn therapy and all the excitements that you've got planned thank you very much sophie